In the last video where we introduced the GMAC motor, we showed all these features that it's capable of and how to install it on a bicycle. And here we're going to illustrate these things live and in action and how to tune the phase runner software in order to get the most out of your GMAC motor. So if you've got the GMAC motor and the phase runner together as a kit from us, we'll have preloaded a set of settings on the phase runner so you don't need to do any tuning. It will become, it'll come pre-tuned. If you're hooking it up to a controller you got previously, you need to make sure that your motor parameters are configured correctly. So the GMAC motor has 80 effective pole pairs. It's a 16 pole motor with a 5 to 1 gear reduction ratio. And the RPM per volts is going to be 8 or 10, depending on whether you have the 10 turn winding or the 8 turn winding. The GMAC motor is capable of quite high power levels, so we usually set the maximum phase current and the maximum regen currents right near their maximum values. Here I've got them set for 90 amps of phase power and 90 amps of regen. Uh, you could go all the way up to 96 amps if you want. Some of the other motors, we set that more conservatively, like 60 or 70 amps, but the MAC motors are able to cope with higher torque levels like this. So when it comes to setting up the regen capability, there's two currents that come into play here. You have the regen phase current and the regen battery current. Now these two things are a little bit different. The phase current is the actual amount of braking torque that's gonna be on the motor, and it's the current flowing from the, con from the motor into the motor controller. But because it's flowing in at a lower voltage, when it steps that current back into the battery, you get a smaller current flowing into the battery pack. Now at high speeds, the phase current and the battery currents are very close to each other. So if you set a battery current limit of say 10 amps or 15 amps to protect the cells from being charged too fast, you're not gonna get maximum braking torque when you're traveling fast. But as you slow down, the difference between the phase and the battery current increases, and then you'll experience right to that full 90 amps of braking force as your speed decreases to a stop. If you want high braking at a high speed, then you need a battery that's capable of absorbing large amounts of regen current. And really it takes about 20 to 25 amps if you want full braking at 40 to 50 kilometer hour speeds. So now we're gonna discuss this new feature of virtual electronic freewheeling. So if you're running the Phase Runner Suite version 1.1 or later, there'll be a dedicated section for virtual electronic freewheeling. And there's a checkbox to enable this. Now what this electronic freewheeling does is allow a baseline current to continuously flow through the motor even if you're not applying the throttle. That current will drop to zero once the motor stops or once you squeeze the brakes and it will resume the moment that there's a bit of throttle applied again. That gives the capability of just overcoming the drag that's normally in the motor. So I'm just going to illustrate this effect and we're going to spin up this Mac motor without any freewheeling enabled and watch the spin down time. So now we're going to run this up to speed and let it slow down. And so that came to a stop within several seconds um, as a result of the core drag of the Mac motor without its clutch. And if this was a freewheeling motor like an Easy Hub, it would spin quite a bit longer than that, but still come to a stop. So our goal with setting up this freewheeling current is to have it more or less offset the drag. And we can do that a little bit by trial and error. So I'm gonna start off here with say one amps of freewheel current, save parameters. And now if you watch what happens when we hit the throttle on the motor, so I'm running full throttle now, I let go. And notice how much longer it takes to slow down. So with that current being injected, the motor is experiencing less total drag, but it still does come to a stop. And that was kind of similar to what a lot of geared motors will be. If your goal is really to have no drag from the motor, we'd want to set that up so that the motor actually doesn't stop. It slows down and then just spins slowly and idly on its own. So we're going to go from 1.1 amps here and try maybe setting it at 1.45 amps. So save these parameters and let's see how that works. Now I've just let go. And it just comes to a stop probably four to five times longer to coast down than it did without that current injection. Um, so to me, this would seem like an appropriate value so that you're offsetting the drag of the motor. Um, and there's nothing saying you have to set that to perfectly offset it. If you want to have a little bit of baseline boost or power, you could go maybe up to two and a half amps here. I'll even just go to two amps. Um, and with two amps, what we'll probably see, the motor itself, I'll spin it up to speed, let go of the throttle. And 
it's been slowing down, slowing down, but it's probably not going to stop. So, so at this point, the 2 amps of injection current is sufficient to keep the motor actually spinning at this lower speed. It can't keep it at a high speed, it will at a low speed. And so now, if I was to stop this motor, then the current drops down to zero, and until we start riding the bike again, it's not going to continuously inject that current until you need it and the wheel is actually moving.